All right. Hi there, it's Brian Sebastian. Movie reviews more the Women's Broadcast TV Network, Women on TV TV, and IT247 out of Tennessee. And I have to say, I'm smiling about this young lady because I had no idea who she was. We've never met. I don't know how we've never met, but you know, <laughs> oh my God. So here's the thing. What do you got? And I go by views, but in your case, it's very interesting. You've got 2.3 million followers on your Instagram. Oh. You're founder of the Wishwall Foundation, which I adore. I had no oh, idea. I've got you. a new charity that I like now, and I'm told we'll talk about that later. So best-selling author, a model, influencer, fashion icon. You're from Italy, so I should have figured it out. You know, radio <laughs> personality, international fashion, lifestyle blogger. I'm not done yet, and I've never done this one. So when it comes to the world of influencers, and I love them, so number 12 in the influencer, of the world, but also named in the top nine power women in the world. That we made my mouth drop. Once I heard that, I was like, oh my God, Harry and I have to meet all the other girls and my co-hosts got to meet you. There's, so I'm going to introduce yourself because it's one and the only who? Am I, am I speaking or can I speak? I'm speaking now. Just, Tell us who you are. Everybody. <laughs> I mean, because I thought, nice to meet you, Terry, by the way. Nice to meet you, <laughs> I too. I just saw you pop in. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you. This is very welcoming. Thank you so much. Like you said, a lot about me, of course. Uh, like you uh, mentioned, I um, moved to the U.S. Um, pretty much five, like five years ago from Italy. I just recently became also an American citizen, so I'm very proud. Uh, it was oh. a long process. Ah. <laughs> Long process, but you know, we accomplished it and um, my life really went for the better um, being here in America. I, I truly, I'm, I'm in Philadelphia, I really love my city, I uh, really love, you know, uh, what my city stands for, you know, the brother love. My city really uh, also inspired me a lot with, you know, all that I do, uh, like you were mentioning from the fashion point of view, but also the charity point of view. I have to say that actually America gave me a lot of inspiration for my non profit because the idea was born, of course, with me and maybe uh, my parents, I would say, because they were, you know, my role model and back in Italy, but, you know, really make it into practice. It was America, you know, they really um, gave me that inspiration and taught me a lot. Um, actually, when I moved to Philly, I was introduced to um, a councilman who really believed in me and, you know, gave me that uh, extra, you know, support to, you know, uh, bring my charity to actually fruition and to, you know, to light. And we did a, a first event uh, when actually Pope Francis came to, to Philadelphia and people came and uh, I started to really interact with people. And that's when I say, you know, that I really learned from Americans because they gave me so much, you know, a lot of people showed me how they were committed with their community and how they really wanted to give back and how they, you know, had dreams for the world. You know, because a lot of people tell me what type of dreams and definitely, of course, there are people that are dreaming, you know, only for themselves and there's nothing wrong with it. But way more people that I thought actually were dreaming and hoping for the community and that inspired me to really, you know, put together the Wishwell Foundation in this idea of, you know, again, giving back to the community. And so that's a little bit of my story. Well, what part of Italy are you from? I'm sorry, I joined a little bit late today, so I apologize. Um, no problem. From from where? Originally from, so it's it's a little city called Pordenone. Oh. It's in the northern part of, little, of Italy near Venice. Okay. So I'm um, up there. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> my husband, yes, my husband is originally said from this, he was born and raised in America, but he's originally from the south. So we are, you know, the two parts of Italy in my family. <laughs> I knew my friend that's interesting. My cousin actually was a variety host in Italy. She lived in Rome. Mm -hmm. um, this is back in the 90s. I don't know if you know who Wendy Wyndham is. I mean, she's no longer doing variety, but she lived in, she was American, got mm -hmm. discovered in a bank in Italy. <laughs> and oh, was really? in Italy. Yeah, it was in Italy for 20 years and now she's in Miami. Oh. So she's kind of, yeah. I lived so, in Rome but, also for many years. It's a beautiful city. It is beautiful. I mean, I, I love Rome. I'm, I, I really want to go back to Europe after all this. Right? <laughs> done. So, but yeah, your, your story is amazing. Thank you. Um, so, Terry, yeah, and did, you're right. Terry, did you know who she was before at all? A little bit. I mean, I did a little bit of, of, um, of, of you know, once we got her name. So, yeah. 
Because because I was telling her, you know, before I started recording, I'm like, in my book, I put her to one of all the people that I've interviewed because of just what she's done. I've never done that before. And I was like, mm -hmm. I've never met. How is that possible? Uh, who is this woman? Where did she come from? I wanted to know. How come, you know, Jimmy and Eileen didn't give it to me ahead of time? I would have asked for her had I had known all of this stuff. <laughs> You're so sweet. Well, well welcome. <laughs> I, well, exactly. So, so I know this. Um, Terry's got over 3 million views. And I, and I figured this out about three weeks ago. And I said, is this number right? And I'm like, it is right. I'm like, she's done that? And the reason was because she's been on almost every show. So we get, you know, we're at, Terry, we're at 5,654,000 views and 19 views today. That's from a Thousand. lot of the red carpet events, which I miss. Uh -oh. <laughs> right, right, I know. miss getting glammed up in the other red carpet. I like being a diva, sorry. I know. We're all missing, you know. I mean, it's kind of interesting in this moment of, history because I believe that you also are going through the saying that sometimes we are, you know, all nice on the top part and then sweatpants on the middle because and we're missing that I need also some red car bunny because you know it's posting your you know you you want you you know to be out there and you know it's yeah. just nice and it's just nice because otherwise we'll just stay in the PJs. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if you're I don't know if you're doing this but I kind of you know us women who are fashion divas and like clothes and you know, I, I'm missing, you know, you know, buying pretty clothes to wear on the red carpet and stuff. I find myself buying a lot of really cute gym clothes right now. And I'm wondering, <laughs> I did the same. <laughs> a lot of more people are, are, are buying more, you know, because there's not really anywhere to go. I know. So. I know. No. Actually, I was in uh, New York at the beginning of the month uh, to do my TV show. And it was kind of weird, you know, it was empty. So it is, uh, actually I was in Times Square and you know, Times Square usually it's like so crowded. It was definitely a weird situation. I mean, we are in a, in a moment, an historical moment that it's very interesting, Yeah, it, <laughs> very tough. And it's hard too, because you've got certain parts of the country that are on lockdown, certain parts that are not. Um, you've got certain rules and, some cities and other cities so it's, it's very confusing and there's a lot of tension between everybody and i really believe like right now and i made a subconscious thing in a conversation with brian about this is like i can't take sucking any of this negative energy Absolutely. in and it's really easy to get sucked into negative energy right now True. because everybody there's a lot of anger True. out there so we have to especially as social uh media influencers we have to focus on trying to bring up positive in people because people need that right now. It's very, very important. And also I was talking with a friend of mine, she's actually a doctor in a podcast the other day, and we were talking about from a scientific point of view, you know, the power of vibration, the power oh. of positivity. It's not just blah, 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 you know, mm. it, it really, it's actually science. There is a, a way to um, monitor and, and really test and get the vibration of emotion. And it's, it's very fascinating. Actually, I don't know if you guys knew, but planet Earth itself vibrate pretty much around 80 megahertz. And it's oh. very interesting because of course, uh, planet Earth, you know, we, we forget that we are, you know, um, I mean, we, we come from planet Earth and that's why we vibrate with her. She's doing her own, you know, uh, awakening. And we as humans are also doing ours. So whenever, you know, vibrate with anger and uh, anxiety, you vibrate very, very low. Whenever you vibrate with love and brotherhood and compassion, you vibrate very high and that's why you know, we need absolutely also to use our mind to be, you know, very focused right now. And whenever there's negativity, really try to, you know, erase as much as we can, as fast as we can, because again, there's science behind it. We have to protect, you know, ourselves and our loved ones also in that matter, in my opinion. Yeah, we had this exact conversation the other day, Brian, didn't we, about really? vibrations and being positive. I, I, yeah, I've been going well. through all of that with my shaman, who I've known since Joy Delaney, since October 1993 and what had happened um, it had always put me around women so you know here we are on women on tv and you know the 13 co-hosts they're all women they're all powerful <laughs> in their own way and you know terry vocal <laughs> but at the same time a strong woman uh you know and i said use this outlet to get your frustration out never mind what's on 
Facebook or whatever, use this outlet and then they can't really attack you that way because you got a lot to say. And she does. Well, I would and I'm most proud of her that way, you know. But also it's a learning lesson too. It's a learning for me and patience. <laughs> so, <True. laughs> so, you know, everything you go through in life, you go through for a reason and you like some people don't learn lessons. They just keep bouncing off the wall. You know, but you can only hit your, hopefully you only hit your head against the wall so many times, but it's exactly. like, to me, I started getting really depressed because I realized I'm taking a negative energy. I'm not on a higher vibration. So I've started to listen to the, you know, binary beats music of the higher vibrations. Yes. Um, and, and try to, I mean, I'm not very good at meditating because of my, I have a little bit of ADD. I'm pretty mm -hmm. much all the place all the time. That's, but that's why I'm good at multitasking. But then it's hard for me to unwind. So I've been trying to listen to, you know, the higher vibration sounds when I go to sleep and it does help. Absolutely. It really does help. I can't, I can't explain it, but it, again, as you were saying, there's a science behind it. Absolutely. This is not mumbo jumbo stuff. It's been studied Even by some science. just good classical music. I mean, I remember when I was a child, my mother liked Vivaldi and I was like, oh, it's boring. <laughs> now I'm actually putting it somewhere. I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so soothing. Immediately, you know, you feel your, your spirit just, you know, aligning. So some nice classical music, whenever, you know, you're down, that's why I, I always say to people, you have to use this to your advantage and have, you know, your tools whenever you need them. So for instance, some music, like you're saying, or that, that book that might help you, or that episode, that podcast that you follow that can, you know, help you. It's just important that we make those decisions, though, uh, especially right now to, hey, I'm in a negative uh, set set up let's you know, move on because otherwise we're all going to <laughs> collapse as society i mean it, it's definitely tough there's there's a lot of uh, humanity that is like you're saying uh, maybe i've lost uh, contact even with this all social distancing you know, unfortunately we are losing my, my mother is she's a psychotherapist and all of her life was you know to really make people encounter mm -hmm. and now she's like oh my god even with children you know the importance of socializing being together and now they're telling you hey no stay you know far away so it is of course a moment in history that maybe you know we'll, we'll, we'll have to see the you know the results for a long time unfortunately and you know again I just send a lot of prayers because it's definitely tough. But on the other side, there's a lot of innovation also happening, a lot of you know new ways, a lot of new thinkers that are arising. Of course, social media definitely is, is leading you know the way because of you know all of this that we can we are able to do. There are companies that unfortunately are you know going in bankruptcy, and there are other companies that are uh, you know, arising, the world is changing and we are witnessing and we're trying, you know, to do all of our best. Yeah. You know, you know what was interesting is that I was at, I was at the CES show. The last uh, event that I went to was the Italian startups. I met some really good, uh, our fellow countrymen and I was so honored to be there. And I was like one of the few Americans there and I'm looking around. They had great Italian food there and they had the wine, they brought out everything. And I'm like, this is cool. I wish I could have, I wish Barry could have been in and covered two of the other hosts. And, and then after February, the pandemic started happening. I felt so bad because I still got the video of these, the Italians just having fun with good yes. wine, with the new startup and the new technology. And I felt bad. What was that like for you when your home country was locked down? Cause I felt really bad. Mm. I was like, I hope some of the business don't, don't go out. I would do anything to help them. <laughs> That you saw the face. I mean, I have, like I said, my mother, she's a psychotherapist. My father is a medical doctor. My father actually was one of the few uh, medical doctors really keep his office open because I'll be honest, a lot of medical doctors starting to freak out, closing the doors to patients. My mm. father said, I've never received so many things, you know, as right now, because I'm giving them, you know, my father, I mean, he's like, listen, I mean, I have to, you know, my, my profession is to serve my, my patients. And so he kept it open. Of course, there, there is a lot of mental health problems right now because of all that is happening. Uh, and I think that honestly, we're not looking at that, but that to me is going to be the, the, you know, one of the worst outcome of, of it. Because again, people are losing their businesses. 
uh, people are, you know, losing their livelihood and they just don't know what to do. So, you know, hearing from my parents, you know, that everything was so locked down and then, and then so many, you know, confusing information coming, you know, data that are like all over the places. You really don't know what to believe anymore. I mean, I have, of course, my scientific opinion, honestly, hearing to, you know, again, good doctors and PhDs, I mean, again, there's a lot of misinformation a ton. around. Yes. I mean, I tried to... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just let you know, I mean, I work in healthcare fields. Um, I studied psychology in college. I so I, that's my other life besides hosting yes. and fitness. Yes. So I understand a lot of this. And I have conversations with doctors every day. And it's very frustrating because the media has got an agenda they just do and mm -hmm. there's so much misinformation there and it's just really sad because people don't want to listen absolutely they just they just want to be brainwashed by certain things and they're not open to other ideas i'm a person i'm very curious so i always want to listen to other ideas and see what other thoughts are out there and right now we're living in a world where you're if you question anything you know you're a theorist, theorist, right <laughs> It's like, I'm just questioning, I'm just having some questions, yeah. right? And again, based out of science, mm -hmm. like my father told me, he said, listen, get a book from yeah. medicine, right? And he said, all that they're saying right now, it just doesn't no. add up whatsoever. I mean, the real doctors, and that's why I said also the other day in another podcast, I'm sorry to say that. Like, I understand that people say, I don't know what to believe in. My personal opinion, try to first of all of course say what resonates with you really get information get multiple sources and there's a factor to me it's sad to say but try to also hear from doctors and that what you call experts that are not paid yeah. it's sad to say so but if there are the you know pharmaceutical companies behind and insurance companies behind can we really believe in the information mm -hmm. that is you know a legitimate question that i had as you know a citizen then of course i'm also the daughter of a, a doctor he works for himself so he's free and there are so many other doctors that are working for themselves they're free they're saying this doesn't add up i mean the information they're mm -hmm. giving us are very confusing Again, the data many times, like even the, the same Atlantic published the last week, the fact that the CDC is giving like information, like for instance, is, is putting in the numbers of the positive uh, people that just have the antibodies for the common flu. So you really don't understand what you have to, you know, believe in, but at the end, you really are seeing businesses going away and people going crazy. And so, you know, there are, of course, I think it's, it's fair to start to ask questions. Yeah. And that's, that's what, you know, talking to some of my doctors, I mean, there's a fact that some of the testing is not accurate right now. Absolutely. That's, the, that's the biggest problem that I'm seeing is that the testing is Absolutely. Off. Absolutely. And those are getting count, counted anyway. And the pay, and I do know that the cases are less severe. I mean, I do know that things are getting better, but you know, it, if you say that, your conspiracy theorist or your political and i'm not you know there's, again, there's, there's nothing about, political about science i mean yeah. even again the atlantic said it. the cdc mm -hmm. actually wrote um recently that if you are testing positive uh you might have or the what you can call it covid19 or again a family <laughs> of the coronaviruses oh, yeah. as is you know uh well known as a common Blue, they wrote it. So that's what, there's nothing conspiracy here. They're just, you know, asking questions, normal questions. And again, is this completely shutting down the economy uh, legitimate? I have questions because I've seen, you know, like you were asking me about Italy, my country is destroyed. People mm -hmm. don't have food on their tables. It's real, yeah. especially, especially in certain areas. I mean, really, it, like, for instance, we as Americans, and I can say that too now, I'm American. Sometimes we're spoiled. We, we got, for instance, money from the government. Um, it, it, Italian didn't. There's so many people that didn't get anything. There are like so many people that my mother talks with that they just didn't receive anything for months. They just don't have how to feed their families. So, you know, this is really, I have nothing to do with a, any political thing. We're really spoiled. We don't know how good we have so many times. And I can say it because I'm European. 
trust me, it's bad there. Yeah. They literally don't have food. It's sad. But I'm seeing that happening here, though, with some of my friends that are either hairdressers, they own gyms, um, they have their own businesses. It's starting to happen here. And Absolutely. But, but I agree. But no, I'm seeing business owners also standing up to it and refusing to close. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see how that happens. But it's just kind of people people spend their whole life building a business. Let's say if you're a gym owner and then you this who would think that you, you know you'd become a successful gym owner and be taken away from you. And it's to me it's it's insane. I feel like sometimes I live in the twilight zone. I'm like, is this gonna end? And it's and, and you're a show, right? Yeah, and, and what's even worse about it is that you know things like this happen, but it's, it's this is a worldwide event. It's not just in California. It's mm -hmm. not just America. Of it's course. everywhere. Everybody. So it makes it even more yep. like insane, you Absolutely. know? So I so agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very important that again, that we have this conversation that we keep on saying to people, ask questions. I always say, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe anybody, but ask questions. You know, you have every right to ask questions, to understand why this is happening, you know? Mm -hmm. And like we were saying, on the other side, of course, like in history, we've learned that we always came out of, of crisis. I mean, mm -hmm. we as humans are very resilient. Uh, of course, there's a lot of anger, like you're saying, because mm -hmm. maybe the motivations are not clear why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, like I was saying, I, for instance, I've been doing some listicles in, on the Entrepreneur Magazine. I was inspired to see uh, some young entrepreneurs and women entrepreneurs that are actually thriving right now. So that mm -hmm. is inspiring to me, even, you know, uh, even if there are, you know, all these problems, mm -hmm. there are still people that are, you know, uh, find a solution. So at least we have, like we were saying before, trying to be positive and look, um, you know, um, other data that are positive. And I also was saying to people, hey, if you really lost your job, definitely social media is still a place that can give you an opportunity. I, I know it's not easy because maybe you've been doing like a nine to five job all your life and you don't even know where to start. But the thank goodness to internet, we have free webinars, free, you know, uh, yeah. courses where you can start and, you know, get information and hey, start a new business. You never know, you know, entrepreneurs actually always have that, you know, when they start, they always have that anxiety. And then, you know, there has to be something that will kick you in the butt <laughs> and say, go for it, you know, yeah. and so maybe and that, for a lot of people, this could be the reason or the motivation. And with that, so how do you see the world of fashion changing now, especially <laughs> country but all and also talk about the wish wall because i've got a new for terry i've got a new for charity now so i always go okay. to the hospital make a wish doctors without borders because robin williams turned me on to that but also i like yours so yours is going to be Thank my you. fourth one now talk about yeah. why that's <laughs> so the the world of fashion is of course has already changed because of social media. You know, we've seen that. How you know all the people that were from the you know old school got kind of you know shocked by you know social media influencer coming in. And I understand rightfully so because I'm I'm old I'm I'm a millennial, but I'm an old school. I've learned from Vanity Fair. I've learned I've learned you know from the old school. I really believe in quality. Um, so that of course that was a huge shift. And now, of course, we're going even more hardcore, definitely, because, I mean, they just said that New York Fashion Week will happen. But, hey, we really don't know until the very last moment we're praying. Definitely, of course, the events, if it will happen, the events will be different, you know. And definitely, there, there's going to be innovation. Like, I've seen already designers that are doing their own uh, private um, shows. They're filming it and then blast it all over. And that I really like because I always say I belong to the fashion world as well. But I believe that the fashion world is a little bit too snobby. And I don't like that part of it. I like, you know, the fact that we can open up, you know, walls to everybody. So why not, you know, filming your own show, using also avatars or holograms and, you know, really doing something different and open it up through social media to everybody. I mean, so many of my followers say, I really want to come to New York Fashion Week. And let's face it, if you're not part of the game, you're not invited. I don't like that. You know, what if, you know, designers will open it up for, you know, everybody to see their shows through, uh, for instance, an HGTV uh, series or live or, you know, videos. I think that that would be, you know, very, very cool. And so we are, of course, going towards that. And even if, of, of course, like we're missing the red carpets and all of that, like we were saying, I think that that part of the 
solution, it's cool. You know, the fact, the fact that we can open up doors to everybody. Yeah. And I think we're going towards a direction. It opens up another audience that might not have been be able to see it. Like yes. it's happening, it's happening in fitness too. I mean, a lot of the fitness shows now, um, I was, I, I, I was, in May that didn't happen because it was canceled. So I'm going to do one probably in November and I'm going to probably have to go to Vegas to do it, but there's still no audience right now. Yeah. So, but I think, you know, more people will be able to see it because they're going to have to broadcast it on social media because they got to have some kind of audience so that the competitors go, you know, the competitors want to be seen, you know, your clothes want to be seen. So it's just a whole new way of doing things. I mean, hopefully this is not forever, but maybe we can have two, when this is over, two more, another avenue to showcase clothing, to showcase fitness, or to showcase cooking or whatever, you know, talent you have. Absolutely. And also what I like, again, I'm really trying always to, you know, find the positive out of here. What I like is that I met a lot of people that maybe, maybe through this process became more humble and more and less judgmental, let's put it this mm -hmm. way, because, hey, it's hard for everybody. Why do we have to judge one another? Why can't we help each other? And I've seen, you know, uh, a lot of people opening up to, you know, this. So, for instance, even in my TV show, I've seen, like, huge celebrities being so humble and kind and, you know, talking about no normal stuff that let's face it maybe in the, in the past they would have been you know maybe different i don't know i'm just saying that this opens up a, a different you know set up for everybody well this whole thing i think is is um how can i put this you're kind of seeing who people really are yeah, a lot the true this, colors. because true. there's a lot of people that have been really that were successful that are horrible people now i'm sorry they're just horrible they're just really negative and they've gotten mean they didn't used to be mean but now they're mean so you're kind of you're i'm seeing some people kind of shift but here's the thing about that is that a lot of them were always like that you just didn't see it because you can't you, you could hide just didn't people. see the meanness they had yeah but now you can't hide that because we're in the age of aquarius so that's some of the stuff as a retro yeah and everything i'm like an that. aquarius there you, you know. go. <laughs> you, can't, you can't hide that stuff. So Terry will know. That's one reason why we went to do our shows in Tennessee in 2018. I saw all these changes coming. So we weren't affected by this. So I want to invite you to our Green Weaver Ranch with stuff that we're doing because it's meant for a lot of people. But some people won't come because they're not supposed to come, if that makes sense. Meaning the right people will come. Uh, it makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Talk about your wish wall, because I would love to do something yeah. for that on our property. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm actually, since you know we're talking about it, I'm in the search right now. Because because of the regulation that we were talking before, for instance, I've been doing a lot of work lately in Africa and in the Philippines and everything is shut down. It's very sad. I had like this beautiful projects for um, girls, young girls, and I was so proud. I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm, you know, praying to God, really, you know, make it go because we were able to do, to close the first batch of these girls. The project is all about, I, I donated them computers and uh, internet and tutors so that they can actually learn how to use social media, coding, um, uh, graphic design, because there's a huge problem of um, underage marriage there. Right. So, you know, the idea was to give them some tools so that they can go back to the family say hey you know i don't need to be married 13 i can you know i can be of you know i can help out the family it's very sad to say but that's reality so you know i really try to go and really see the real problems and try to solve them as much as i can so i'm so proud that we were able to close the first batch of girls but now we're missing other two and the government just you know don't allow us to have the girls meet up it's just so sad so Again, it was funded. They have everything. I'm still waiting for the government. Same thing for the Philippines. I had a great project with, we are trying to bring the potable water to an indigenous community that we already, you know, work with. We did a beautiful things for 180 children last year. This year, I'm, you know, already funded, moving everything. And the well, we cannot just bring it because otherwise they, they said that there, they, there's military all over. So it's very sad. So right now, I'm really looking so please go to the wishful.org. If you have any projects here in America, 
or in, you know, somewhere in the world where you think that I can help or we can help, please go because I'm looking. I want to, you know, do something that will impact her for the community 100%. And just that right now, like I said, all this project, I'm so, I'm, you know, in phone calls trying to manage everything, but I'm looking. So the wish for the way that it works is that I need you guys, you, you know, to mm -hmm. write me stuff so that I can, you know, look and see what we can do together. And that's the concept of the wish well. How did you become a top nine power woman in the world? I was fascinated by that. Thank you. On a list with Meg Whitman. How did that happen? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so eventually the, the effort that I put towards, you know, my TV show, that really, you know, brought some inspiration because of course, so I started my TV show in February. Um, actually, I started to put it together in January, and then February was the first uh, episode, and we were in the studios in New York, and we were still just talking about, you know, all of this, but nothing still happened at that time here in America, and then right after everything, you know, collapsed, so I had to find a solution, I had to find a way to, you know, still continue. It was, of course, as you can imagine, very, very hard, especially, you know, like we were saying, going... I mean, towards, of course, a big crisis for us as humans, right? Mm -hmm. And also for others. And then having to deal with celebrities and their entourage. And like you were saying, you know, true colors have started to arise. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, it wasn't easy at all. But I was able to keep on going, keep on, you know, delivering content. Uh, content. And then that uh, eventually was noticed. And USA Today, you know, really appreciate it and put me as one of the nine top uh, power women with other amazing women that are doing you know great things all over the world so that gives me you know a lot of um personal satisfaction also the other um list that i was put in uh prior it was about being one of the top five most powerful women in in fashion and also that i really like the motivation because i was for women empowerment before the women empowerment was considered cool <laughs> you know i always had that in my heart because i'm i mean if a woman i mean i'm happy if anybody succeed but of course if a woman succeed i'm like i'm your fan you know i really want to see you happy i want to see you succeed and that is something that i always had and of course my charity also helped me to keep on developing you know that feeling and keep on also uh you know I don't know. It's like that. I inspire my charity. My inspire my charity inspired me. You know, to keep on being you know, on that path. Yep. You know. You know what's funny about that? Uh, and Terry was there. Uh, 2015 uh, Hollywood Film Festival. We had brought the Chinese over for uh, our festival, so we were in China uh, Daily English. We had 80 million views on that, and then that's when we started Women Empowerment. Oh, like, nice. Women Empowerment because the women couldn't decide which name they wanted to do. So me and Brad decided, let's just call it women empowerment. And then the women liked it. Yeah. We started that in 2015. Wow. <laughs> At yes. the film festival. So with that, I've been putting in all that stuff together, which is why we all have women co-hosts for movie reviews and more. And so Terry's been the longest one, and she's been the one that stayed. I mean, I, I'm surprised. I don't know what it was that she said. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Like, but you know, she's still here. So, but the fact that she has over 3 million views, that makes me happy. I'm happy for her. Of course. Of course. Of course. And so again, it, you know, it gives me joy that even if, you know, uh, it seems hard, even if we are in a world or we used to be in a world full of me, 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 mm -hmm. me, there's still, of course, a lot of me, me, me. But I think that because of all that is happening, we are kind of forced, you know, to move, to shift to us and to shift to helping each other. So like you're saying, a lot of people are showing their true colors. Maybe some people will, you know, uh, stay behind. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Please join us if you want because we want everybody. But we definitely, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, true motivation uh, come in. And that I, I think it's very inspiring. You know, people that are really, again, like me, being a world of, you know, something that I truly believe in. And when I started, you know, talking about women empowerment, when I started to say, hey, let's continue. Honestly, I wanted to continue to do my show because I said, no, I just started, I, I cannot not give, you know, content to my viewers, you know, I can inspire them. I can give them, you know, some, some good moments, some laughs and some inspiration, some tips. And, you know, I think that when you are genuine, you know, people will notice that, in mm -hmm. my humble opinion. Yep, I, I agree. Terry, that. when we get back to normal, 
I want to, I want our first interview in, in person to be if we can get a hold of her. Yes, I agree. I don't care <laughs> if it's in Tennessee, because we got a place in Tennessee. We got yes. Linda Steele's place in Chicago. Yes. Uh, we got a place in Miami now. We got a place in Vegas. Nice. A place in Los Angeles in our Dream Weaver Artist Ranch. I want you to be our first guest. I'm going to make this happen. I don't care if we have to come close to Pennsylvania or Philadelphia. I don't care. You're going to be the first person I want. I'm telling you that. Thank you. Thank you. We got so two much. minutes. Um, let me ask you this real quick. Yes. Um, what do you identify with most? A blogger, a fashion icon, a TV radio? Which, which is first? And <laughs> I don't know which one. I'm curious. So, okay, if you really ask me, you know, a fashion influencer, that being said, yeah. it's very limited. And I think that one of the things that I try with my, you know, life to uh, prove other people's wrong is that, you know, they try always to put you in a little box. A little right? box. Right? And I, I, I really remember when I really started, when I, I was a young model, a 16, and then I started to also study to be an actress. And I was paying my bills to be an actress and then again I wrote my book and so I became also you know part of that world and then social media influencing then you know television with you know being a host and then vanity fair all of that I understand it's a lot but I proved you know over the years that it's possible to you know kind of put it all together if you're you know if you're core if you're focused if your mind and soul are aligned mm -hmm. you know so you know i i understand it's not easy sometimes you know in a good way i'm envious of people that you know do only one thing because i understand they might be they might be sleeping a little bit more than what i do because i i, I work so much so they might be you know just having a, a lot of life but i i love my life and you know i cannot change it for anything else again of course i'm a creative mind so definitely social media i have to say was that tool that allow me to put, you know, the social media influencer, the fashion icon, the, you know, model, and the TV host uh, all together. Also, writer, you know, I, I right now, uh, my, my, yeah, I, you're I, a best selling my, author too. Yes. Uh, yes. My first novel was actually, um, even there, it's a fascinating story because um, I wrote my, it was at the beginning my personal story. And that's actually a tip that I always give to people when they don't know where to start from. I always say, start with you and your story. And then, you know, from there it developed and actually became, I always say, you know, my first novel, have my story and half you know, became kind of a novel, but whatever you want to do in every business, in my opinion, you want to do, start with you and, you know, with your experience, with your story. And then of course, you know, also uh, maybe be on one side lucky enough and on the other side, really go for it to look for the right team, for the right people, you know, and the right uh, environment, you know, to keep on, um, you know, boost you because <laughs> I really like, I always say that the story of Mahatma Gandhi, that he was a, a lawyer. I don't know if you guys know, mm -hmm. and it was, and he had this dream, right? To be, uh, to really advocate for people, but he was a small lawyer from a small place. And without the brother that would, you know, that went there and say, I believe in you, you know, you can, you can actually fight for human rights and do all of that. He then became the Mahatma Gandhi, which means the great soul, you know, without the brother, it was only Gandhi, you know, so Mahatma Gandhi became because of someone believed in him. And it's very important that nowadays we remember each other to, you know, believe in each other and cheer for another. And with that, give you some media links. We got about 60 seconds. Yes. So Simon Ataline, S I M O N E double T A L E I N, Twitter and Instagram the same. And then simonataline.com and the wishwallfoundation.org. Please send me projects. I want to do something. I want to, you know, I mean, make this world a better place. I know it seems easy. It's not, but we can do it together. And Terry, yours? Uh, Terry Marie official is my website and then uh, Terry Marie nonstop on all platforms. And I want to thank this young lady. I call her her young lady because she is everything. Oh, what I said at the beginning you. of the show, you, you're at the top of my list now. And I don't just say that you are at the top of my list because of all the stuff that you've accomplished. So with that, I thank want to thank so this young lady and for Terry, this is Brian Sebastian movie reviews and more women on TV. TV. 
I team 247 out of Tennessee. And if you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it.